Right, hello everybody. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to have a little talk uh, about uh, how we can work and, and move data into and out of uh, cloud environments, between different cloud environments, and also different virtualization platforms as well. Um, before I start, I'm just interested to know, have many of you heard of Double Take before? Has anybody used Double Take? That's good. It means it's a, a nice, easy <laughs> audience because you won't have heard of Double Take, so it'll be something you'll learn and, and maybe uh, find interesting. Um, my, my name, as I say, is Andy Ebbs. So I, I've been doing solution architecture for the last few years, but I've also got a lot of history in disaster recovery and high availability. Uh, I've been working with Vision Solutions and formerly Double Take Software uh, for actually about 11 years. I think it's a seven on there, but it's about 11 years. Um, and, and hopefully I'll have worked with some of the organizations you, you, you work with yourselves. Um, I've got a lot of experience in uh, NHS and local government and, and MOD and people like that as well, as well as private sector type organizations. So I'm going to talk about how it's possible to, to move data seamlessly to the users between physical to the cloud, from the cloud to virtual, and back again, or any other combination of those. So you, know, you could be going the other way around that loop as well. Um, I want to start with virtual environments and some of the sort of limitations that uh, people sort of encounter when they're moving to that sort of platform. I'm assuming most of you are using virtual environments somewhere in your organization. It's quite a common way of doing it, whether it be ESX or Hyper-V. Uh, maybe Virtual Iron or one of the more uh, unusual ones, maybe Zen even. Um, and there's a lot of differences between these different platforms. And at the moment, customers tend to go with one platform across the whole organization, and that might be ESX, and they'll implement hosts based on ESX in, in different sites. Uh, they might have some of those in data centers, some sitting in little regional offices and things like that. But there's other ones out there, so Hyper-V is becoming more and more common. I know in the public sector, that's more and more so because it's obviously considered to be free when you buy your, your Windows licenses, you tend to put that sort of thing in place. Um, and also, you might be using a mixture of environments. Sometimes organizations merge together, so you'll have some Hyper-V, some Zen, some, uh, some VMware. Um, they also tend to have difficulty moving data from one platform to another. So it's okay if you want to do ESX to ESX. There's lots of tools out there to migrate data from one to the other. There's tools to go physical to ESX, and likewise for Hyper-V. But there's not much that allows you to move data from Hyper-V to ESX and do that seamlessly with little downtime to the users. Um, and often storage is also tied into that. You might have uh, a SAN on your main data center. And in order to move your data around, your application data, your database and log files and things like that, then you're going to use SAN to SAN replication. But that can be expensive. But it also generally means you've got to have two SANs of the same type in order to be able to do that. So downtime's the big issue here. Um, if you're using uh, the sort of free tools that VMware give you, you're able to synchronize the data before you move physical workloads into the environment or move from one virtual platform to another. But the downside is you'll have to take the users off, down to, off, off line to do that part of the process. And that can be expensive. So I do a lot of work with organizations, uh, both public sector and private, uh, where servers downtime you know, more than five minutes starts really affecting the business and costing a lot of money to actually take those servers offline and move that data around. And we have solutions that will hopefully explain how we can do that with no downtime to actually move the data. Application configuration and settings and things like that, it can be very difficult to maintain two platforms. If you've got physical and you've got virtual, you have to make sure you've got the applications on both ends. You've got to make sure they're geared up and optimized for these different platforms. And moving from physical to virtual can take a lot of planning, a lot of downtime, just to test and make sure these things are going to actually work. And once you've actually gone physical to virtual, and as I'll talk about physical to cloud again in a minute, sometimes once you've moved that way, you'll find that the performance of those servers is, is reduced. Uh, maybe the, there's not the resources you thought you were going to have there. Maybe you don't need it to run in the cloud anymore. Maybe you change the security profile, or maybe one of your suppliers says it doesn't work in that sort of environment. It's often difficult to go back the other way. It involves a lot of downtime, a lot of planning, and so on. And again, I'm going to talk about solutions that we can maybe help reduce that amount of uh, work that goes into that. And you know, vendor lock-in is a big one. You know, if you go to Hyper-V, there's a big mountain you've got to climb in order to maybe shift to another platform. With Double Take, as I'll show you, we can move from Hyper-V to ESX and so on with very little uh, interference. It's very simple to set, for, set up and to, to move your data around. So you're not locked to using one particular platform or one set of hardware or one type of storage. The cloud environment's fairly similar. 
Although, in some cases, I find it, it tends to be a lot more restrictive. And that's usually when you're working with a cloud provider, they'll give you like a template when you set up a, a new virtual machine in their environment, because they are virtual machines after all. But th those machines will be very restrictive. They'll say you can have a Windows 2008 R2 server, and it will come with a 40 gig disk for your system partition. You can then buy additional storage for your databases and things like that. Uh, you'll have so many network infrastructure type solutions you can set up on that environment as well. But it tends to be fairly fixed to sort of like a template that they'll provide you for. And sometimes those templates, uh, uh, there'll be two or three of them, but they get more expensive the more complex they get. And it's not always the right template for what you need it to do to get the best out of your applications that you're running. Uh, again, they have uh, issues with um, storage allocation, the tools to move you from physical into the cloud or from virtual into the cloud if you're already virtualized. These things get very complicated. There's not really any other solutions out there that allow you to take a workload that's running a physical and move it into that, into that cloud platform. They usually involve taking a copy of the data, putting it onto a cloud that's already been created, an infrastructure that you've created with the applications installed. And all you're really doing is moving the data across. And that part of the process can be quite expensive, time consuming, et cetera. Again, vendor lock-in was the last point on there and, and it becomes even more so. If you've gone to uh, one particular cloud provider and you want to move to another one, it can be very difficult to move from one to the other. So DoubleTake Software, which is the company, uh, well, Vision Solutions, the company I work for, DoubleTake is one of the products that we deal with. Um, and DoubleTake is focused about moving data from anywhere to anywhere. And we can work quite seamlessly between different hardware platforms, so IBM to HP, HP to Dell, physical to virtual. We can work between different hypervisors, so Hyper-V to ESX, ESX to Zen. Uh, we can work between different storage, so we could have iSCSI on one end, fiber channel at the other from different manufacturers. And also the application itself, we don't really see the application, so we're quite happy to move Oracle, Exchange, SQL, whatever the application you actually want to look at protecting. And then often with cloud, I mean, the whole idea of it is to be able to put this in the, sort of the ether so that you don't have to worry about if that data center burns down, there's another copy of it elsewhere because the cloud's all over the place. But often that involves bandwidth and restrictions and you're paying for that bandwidth. Our tools are very, very efficient. We're able to capture byte level real time changes to your data and we can throttle and control the flow of data. So if the bandwidth is intermittent or if you've got limited access to a particular site, we're able to control the flow of data and queue changes and send them when the bandwidth's available to you. So how do we do this? Now, the first solution I'm gonna talk about, this we call this full server failover. And full server failover is our solution to take a physical machine and move it to another physical machine. Now, by a physical machine, I mean not just a Windows server, which is an IBM physical box or HP box. It could be a virtual machine or it could even be a, a, a a cloud machine, in this example at least. So this physical definition I'm making here is it, it's, it's the Windows operating system that we're interested in. And our software installs in the Windows operating system and catches real-time changes and moves them to a second server. So the server on the left-hand side, I've, I've picked on BlackBerry Enterprise Server, but it could be any application server. We build a second server in your cloud, on your virtual platform, or on a new piece of hardware. And we then capture real-time changes as they're happening to the system state, and we store them on that plain Windows server that you've created. So what I'm saying is you, you just you know, invoke a, a new virtual machine, uh, Fujitsu Cloud, for instance. You install the version of Windows that you need, so Windows 2003 or 2008. We then copy the system state from your live production server, whether it be physical or virtual, and we put a copy of it onto that virtual machine in the cloud. We store it in a temporary directory, so it's not actually being used, so you don't need to worry about application licenses and things like that. If you're protecting SQL, you don't need an SQL license on that target at this stage. The application data is then copied to the same location on the virtual disks. So if you had E colon data on your source machine, you'd have the same uh, drive allocated on the target. And we copy the data in real time byte level. So every time somebody changes a phone number or changes an address in a database, we see those byte level changes and we send them to the second copy of the data on the second site. And we do that in real time, we keep doing that over and over again. And we crash consistent, so we keep all the changes in the order that we capture them. So if the server on your live site fails, we're gonna have a live up to the second copy of the data, but it's gonna be structured in such a way that the, the data is crash consistent, the log files and databases will match. If something then happens to your live server, 
Our tools are then able to take the data from the staging directory, this copy of your, your Windows system state and all the program files and so on, and we overwrite the plain Windows operating system. We do that at a software layer, so we leave all the hardware drivers alone. So that's why we can move from one type of hardware or one type of physical or virtual machine to another type of platform because you've got the drivers installed on that plain operating system. That process might take five, 10 minutes, but up until this point, there's been no downtime to the users. We could have installed Double Take without a reboot. We can copy a terabyte of data, including the system state, to your second machine with no outage to the end users. And it's only when we actually cut over, either from migration or as part of a, a failover process because we're doing high availability, that you see some downtime. And that's usually five, 10, maybe 15 minutes on a larger server. It'll depend on the speed of the hardware and the target environment. The machine's then rebooted, and when it reboots, it looks like the same server on the network. So we're able to take your, your physical workload and turn it to a virtual machine in 15 minutes, and that's the only downtime you're gonna see. We do a very similar thing for virtual environments as well. So if you do have access to the hypervisor, so if you're using ESX in the cloud, and that's quite common on private clouds that you have your own ESX host, or your own set of ESX hosts, I should say, we're able to have one virtual machine where we target all your physical or virtual machines, whether they be ESX or Hyper-V or Zen or, or, or physical machines, I say. And we can replicate those all to a single virtual machine on an ESX host. And that machine is acting as a broker, allowing us to create new virtual machines which are kept offline, ready to go. And we replicate straight from the live server through this virtual machine, the single virtual machine, and it writes, writes straight to the virtual hard disk, the VMDK files. And it does that in the background while everybody continues working, so it's using the same technology, real-time byte level, with throttling and so on. And when the data is in sync, either as a migration, you can fail over on demand, and it'll shut down your live server and start the new virtual machine, or as a disaster recovery solution, high availability solution, we can start it up within about five minutes, the time to start the virtual machine up, basically. And when it starts in that virtual environment, it's gonna look like the same server again. We'll have the same applications, the same patch levels. So again, we're only managing one server, the one in your live environment. Obviously keeping the cost down. Um, and from a licensing perspective on, on both these solutions, the, uh, the system state isn't the same until you actually fail over, so you don't need to license things like Exchange or SQL or any other applications you might be running. So in that case, Source 2 failed and the, the other machine came up online. And then the third solution that we tend to get involved with with the cloud, and this is quite a common one, often when you've got a cloud provider, you're paying quite a lot of money for virtual machines that are running there, and if they're not doing anything, you know, after this previous uh, gentleman was talking regarding uh, consumption of energy and so on, you don't always want to have virtual machines running all the time. So if you've got um, 100 machines you want to protect, you don't want 100 machines running in your cloud. And our centralized backup and recovery solution allows you to select a group of servers, and we could be talking 10, we could be talking 100. We build one virtual machine running in the cloud, and in fact, this could be a physical machine located at another site, it doesn't have to be virtual. And we replicate all of them to that one machine. And on that one machine, we create a directory with a copy of the system states of the machines we're protecting. So that system state's gonna be the, the Windows operating system applications, as well as copies of the data. And it's a real-time copy, so every time you change the application, or upgrade, and, and things like that, change the data, we see that real-time, we copy it into that, uh, into that directory. Once we've got it there, it's very useful because we're able to create new machines on the fly. Uh, we can centrally back that data up, so I'll skip the slide there. So what I'm talking about, on, on, we can back up all these files that are in a, uh, a directory structure because they're just closed files. So you can back up 100 machines from one target machine. Um, the server image can be recovered onto a new piece of hardware, similar to the first scenario I talked about with full server recovery. So you just have to then provision your new virtual machine and push the system state onto it. So that could be a, a new virtual machine, it could be a new physical machine or a new cloud machine. Um, but we can also do point in time recovery as well, because we can take snapshots of the data on the target environment, so that if something happens to your whole system state and it becomes corrupt, or maybe you've lost a load of data because you had a, a virus or something, when you fire up the virtual machine, you can choose which image to use. So you can choose to roll back an hour or two <coughs> to recover your data. And because we're taking snapshots on the target environment, it doesn't have any impact on your production server as well. 
Now, different combinations are available. You know, we can do one-to-one, -one, we can do one-to-many. Uh, we can replicate physical to virtual and, and virtual back to physical and so on. We can also replicate within the same server. So for migration point of view, it's quite useful sometimes to be able to move from one storage device to another. And I did a very good case study recently, and I can get a copy of it if you're interested in it, for Canopius, who are a, uh, a shipping insurance company based at Lloyd's of London building. Now those guys had a couple of terabytes of data running on an old DMC SAM, and it was getting near the end of its life. But the downtime involved in moving it to the new left-hand SAM that they'd acquired was gonna be hours, if not days. And because they're international, they had sites in different regions, and some of them couldn't afford to be offline for five minutes while data was being moved around. But what we were able to do is, is move data from the C drive to the E drive, or from one LUN to another LUN within, the, within different SANS, but still connect to the same machine, all in the background while the users remain connected. And it's only when we have to cut over and switch the LUNs around that you see any downtime to the users. So we're minimizing the, the actual impact in the environment uh, and bringing the, the data online again within a couple of minutes. So hopefully the solutions have made a bit of sense. I just wanted to tell you a bit about who, who Vision are and uh, DoubleTake. Um, we, we, we see ourselves as the uh, sort of the global leader in replication technologies for disaster recovery and high availability, uh, business continuity. Um, we have um, some great technology. Uh, it's very flexible. Uh, it allows you to move data between Windows and Linux. We also do AIX and iSeries solutions as well. Some of you might have seen Vision uh, if you've got IBM kit. Um, and we have great value on our product as well. We're a lot cheaper than buying you know, two new matching SANS. And in a lot of cases, we did a lot of business with companies such as, um, well, I'm thinking if you're public sector, you've probably heard of Hackney Borough Council, they're quite a big win for us recently, where they had an old EMC infrastructure and they're migrating to a new data center, but they also have lots of regional offices. So we're able to move data from lots of different sites back to a central one. And they've ended up with a couple of hundred licenses of double take to actually implement that. We've got 70 different countries using it, and I appreciate mostly probably in the UK, but it does mean that you know, our support tends to work you know, round the clock, it follows the sun, so all our product comes with 24 seven support. So you can see we're around the world. And we cover a whole range of solutions, so Windows, Linux, as well as the IBM sort of stuff as well. And hopefully I've, I've talked about something you're interested in. Uh, has anybody got any questions? Any, any, uh, Anybody got any questions of what I'm talking about? Very quiet. Did it make sense? Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope it was interesting. And, uh, you know, if anybody has questions, I'll be around for a little while now. And my uh, email address and so on is on the bottom there. So thank you very much.